What's up, everybody? It's Kamaru Six Hundred. Today, we're going to be today. It's going to be my Money in the Bank 2015 preview predictions of tonight. Uh, we saw lots of stuff went down, but first, before the match began, they had a Dusty Rhodes kind of tin tin bell uh, reigns hole kind of thing going on. Um, the whole roster was out there. It was really nice and really respectable for you know all the lives and uh, careers that Dusty Rhodes has affected over the wide range. I was going to make a video about the past week, but I just thought that was, you know, unnecessary because I could just easily talk about it in a video or whatever and just express my feelings on it. And it's really sad, but, you know, I, I really feel for Dusty, I mean, um, for Gold Dust and uh, Cody Rhodes, you know, definitely feel for those, for those guys. But, I don't know, ESPN talked about the passing of Dusty Rhodes, WWE as well. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's going to be really, it's going to be really weird, you know, not talking about Dusty Rhodes without him, you know, being, uh, you know, acknowledged that he's alive. Because, you know, you wouldn't have thought Dusty Rhodes would pass away. I mean, you knew the day was going to come, but you didn't know when or how early it would be and how shocking it was just out of the blue, you know what I mean? It's just uh, really puts life in perspective. But nonetheless, after all this life lessons and Dusty Rhodes little tribute for my channel, we had a Money to Make contract ladder match. Randall Keith Orton, Neville, Kane, Dolph Ziggler, Sheamus, Kobe Kingston, and Roman Reigns were involved in this match. Um, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this match because Ziggler was almost like not even involved in the match until like the very end almost. Kane was barely featured. Roman Reigns, you know, popped in and out of there. Neville was doing a lot of work. So was Kofi, Orton, and Sheamus. They were kind of the main focal points. But Ziggler and Kane, for some reason, they felt like, felt like they were like cast aside throughout the whole match. It was just um, very weird, but, but, but I mean, I think this match was okay. I don't think it was a great match. No, no. I, I mean, three and a fourth, three and a half at best. Um, I just, you know, Sheamus won. I was, it was really a head scratcher. I mean, there was a couple of nice spots, but no crazy stuff from Neville off the ladder like I was kind of hoping for. Kofi did some pretty cool stuff. You know, the monkey flip and Kobe Kingston did like a whole like, he just got back right back up on his feet, sort of climbing the ladder. I thought that was pretty cool. Ziggler, the zigzag on Sheamus. Orton, Orton the RKO little rampage. I think there were like RKO about three people, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but he, he had a cool RKO on Neville. Um, uh, it, was, it, was, it was really cool, but I wish there was a little bit more stuff that, that went down. I mean, Roman Reigns went on a little tear. Roman Reigns is about to win the Money Bank briefcase until Bray Wyatt came down. Now, I said in my prediction video I thought Bray Wyatt was going to interfere on Randy Orton's behalf and going to, you know, strap on him as he's going to climb the ladder to give Orton something to do, but now Orton has nothing to do. Orton is directionless, just like, you know, there he was with Wyatt, and they're probably like, you know what, Let, let's have him attack Reigns because we'll put another roadblock in front of Reigns. Now, I don't know if we're putting roadblocks in front of guys to make them, you know, better and give them a story and, you know, get you fully invested in their characters in order, you know, you want to see the chase, kind of like how they did Daniel Bryan. And that's why it all culminated at WrestleMania 30. Um, just like how they're kind of doing with Reigns. I think Reigns will finally win the championship probably. Um, I think he'll probably win at WrestleMania 32. It'll be his crowning moment, either that or Survivor Series, because I think this feud will go from Battleground to SummerSlam, and, you know, with Wyatt and Reigns having a match confirmed at Battleground, it's, it's really scary because, you know, Reigns is more than likely going to go over unless Wyatt's, you know, a surprising victory like Kevin Owens did over Cena Elimination Chamber. The, unless that happens, it's going to be, you know, a shock. But, I mean, Reigns is going to go over at SummerSlam. There's no doubt in my mind. Um... And as far as the rest goes, Roman Reigns is just, you know, going to coast throughout the year because Sheamus won the briefcase. You know, he might have a few with Dean Ambrose. He might have a few with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Sheamus versus Brock Lesnar. Oh, my God. Now, that's disgusting. <laughs> that is garbage right there. But, I mean, I don't know. Sheamus has the briefcase. We'll see. Um, Divas Championship match. Uh, Nikki Bella versus Paige. But before I get into this match, Sheamus and Neville had the most awkward kind of finish to a Money to Make ladder match I've ever seen because he just kind of grabbed his hair and his eyes and just went, Nick. I, I just did not like it. Anyway, just back. Just my little random tangent right there. Nikki Bella versus Paige. Actually, a pretty, pretty solid match. Um, I didn't really care about it at first, but it started picking up. And, you know, they tried to do twin magic and it didn't work for Paige. This time, Nikki Bella. Um, this time the twin matches that backfired for the Bella Twins, and then uh, Paige, and uh, Paige was about to win the championship. She'd become a three-time Davis champion, but it got taken away because Nikki Bella won at the end. 
um, even though there's confusion. Now Paige is going to go off for about a couple months and do tough enough, and then there you have it. Um, then we have Ryback versus the Big Show for the Intercontinental Championship. Yikes. <laughs> um, Big Show versus Ryback. Um, not much to say here. I thought Ryback was going to end it in like 15 seconds when he went, went on a huge tear. Miz was out there on commentary, you know, playing to the Ohio crowd in Columbus. Um, but in the end, Miz, like, got Big Show disqualified, and Big Show won the match, but Ryback retained the title and all that kind of good stuff. So there'll be a triple threat in Battleground or a triple threat on Raw. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, Ryback is still going to retain no matter what. And Ryback retains here, so it's kind of a blink and you missed it, and there you go. Cena versus Kevin Owens. John Cena versus Kevin Owens, uh, the rematch. Ooh, what a great match. I mean, it was, this was fantastic. And uh, my whole family was watching uh, Money in the Bank. We normally never watch interviews together, but uh, we hooked up the HDMI cable onto the TV screen with the uh, HP that I have here. And, um, and man, we did it. We were just you know, reacting to false finish after false finish after false finish, and it was somewhat like the Elimination Chamber match, but they added a couple of different tie-ins at the spots, and I just thought it was really wonderful. I just thought it was great. Um, Kevin Owens did not win here. It took three A's for John Cena, though, um, to do so. But, I mean, Kevin Owens looked strong after the match. Cena, you know, being the whole respectful champion. Went for, like, the handshake, and they, they shook hands. Cena held up his hand, said, you belong here. But, Kevin Owens like, nah, DTA, don't trust anybody. Kevin Owens throws John Cena to the side, power bombs him, pretty awkward power bomb into the apron. But I mean, still okay. Cena's probably gonna go for go away for two months, maybe film a movie. I'm not sure. Maybe two weeks, maybe two days. Who knows? Um, but nonetheless, Kevin Owens stands tall at the end of the thing. That's really all that matters. Um, and. More than likely, Cena will probably sit out for bat battle round and they'll have the big blow-off match because both men are one and one and they're even. So both of these men probably have like a last man standing match at like SummerSlam or something like that. Maybe a three stages of hell match. Not really sure at this point, but we'll see. Um, then the next match, New Day, New Day the Tag Team Champions face prominent players for the WWE Tag Team Titles. Not much to say here. Nothing like another one that I was in. It was there just to fill a gap to get from point A to point B. Um, but primetime players get a surprising tag team win. I was definitely expecting the New Day to win here because I thought the New Day was going to carry it until SummerSlam and then drop it to the Lucha Dragons. But nonetheless, good win for the primetime players. Finally, they get their tag team championship goal. was not expecting it at this point. I thought they were going to do a little bit more chasing for the titles. But, you know, good, good solid stuff here. I mean, it was two stars, two stars, nothing, nothing great. Um, ladder match for the WWE World Championship. So Rollins faced Dean Ambrose, right? And it was it started off slow at first, man. It was just slow, just submission hold, you know, rest holds pretty much. Then Ambrose went after the ladder and went up for the briefcase, and then boom, Rollins wham, just hit him with the uh, steel chair to the knee, and then he worked over the knee the whole match. And then like it was just so no selling in here. There was just nothing really. I mean, there was some there was psychology in the match, right? But Rollins would leave Ambrose for dead right out on the outside of the ring, and like all the way furthest away from the arena. And Rollins come back in, stall. Ambrose would run back in with his supposed, you know, hurt knee where he could barely walk. And then he would do the same thing again. Like, and I didn't like how there was a couple cool spots where you know Ambrose did the whole back body drop onto the ladder on the outside of the ring. Now, um, you know, they had some pretty decent stuff in there. Um, you know, with the uh, kick to Ambrose and another kick, and then Ambrose finally did the rebound and clothesline. That was pretty cool. But, you know, Rollins did one powerbomb on the on the uh, barricade. It does another powerbomb on the barricade. Then he took the ladders with the chairs, powerbombed Dean Ambrose, and Dean Ambrose got right back up. I just, I don't get it. They act like they didn't know what happened to him like 30 seconds ago. And, they, yeah, they did have psychology in the match, but it was just... The Ambrose was just really going Super Santa mode right now, and, and there was no need for that. And Rollins, it was just a really... I mean, I like the way the match ended. It was just... It, was, it just could have been way much more. And there was more than I was expecting. 
I was ex or I was expecting more. Maybe that's my fault for expecting more because I mean these two had a lot of really good match. Had one a, a really good match at, at the Chamber. Had another really good match back at SummerSlam. Had a really good match on Raw in the Falls Count Anywhere match. Had a really good match at Hell in a Cell. But I mean this was probably my least favorite match of their their of their you know series of matches for the title. Ambrose might get another match, you know, in Battleground might get a three stages of hell match, who knows? An Iron Man match, not really sure at this point, but Rollins wins. They both were going for the title, and Rollins grabbing on the way down, and Rollins retaining. And then after the match, like, he started talking on the mic, and I thought it was going to be, oh, he's just going to talk or whatever. And then, you know, it didn't happen. Nothing really happened. He just said, I'm the best champion of all time, and then boom. He goes at the title, and that's how the show goes off. Yeah, I thought Brock might have came out, you know, and might have destroyed Seth. I mean, Seth Rollins. Then I thought, you know, Rollins might have stick, stuck around the ring, and they and Triple H could be like, if they want to do to go to the Triple H, Seth Rollins route, do the double turn, or oh, you know, have or not really double turn, have Sheamus come down and be like, we found a suitable placement, and then have him cash in because both men were exhausted, right? And then or Ambrose thought he would have won, then Sheamus would have cashed. I don't know, man. It was just. It was just uninspiring ladder match, just very disappointing. The show wasn't that had Cena versus Owens and really nothing else. But I mean, everything else is you know solid. But I mean, every, yeah. I don't know, guys. Money in the Bank was Money in the Bank, almost the same thing as last year, almost like last year. Um, but yeah, kind of a flat ending uh, to a show. Anyways, uh, Battlegrounds like in next month, which is good to actually get like four weeks of build to this, so we'll see. Thank you for watching this video, and I appreciate you um, just chilling and chilling with me for about 12 minutes um, and stopping by. If you want to comment on Money in the Bank, go ahead, comment, feel free. I love talking to you guys and communicating with you. Uh, like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, well, I guess you know what to do. <laughs> and then if you if you want to stick around for more stuff in the summer via Cobra 6. Uh, then, um, then subscribe. You know, I got lots of cool stuff going on ECW. We got, you know, previews, predictions. We got reviews on everything. Um, you know, we got more topical videos coming uh, this week. You know, we got a room tour coming. We got an action figure collection. We got stuff with anything Go Show um, coming up soon. Like for the Q and A, we got a Q and A coming possibly. Wink, wink, John and Nick. Um, you know. More stuff is coming, so just just stick around. Anyway, guys, see you later. Macho Man shirt, cover off six, and Death the Road. Sign up.